I'm Rick McDaniel, the new lead pastor here at Living Word. If you're watching this, you're seeing the rebroadcast of our live outdoor service that took place earlier today. We're sorry you weren't able to make it, but I've got good news for you. In two weeks from today, Sunday, October 25th at 10 o'clock, we're going to do it again. You can join us live right here on the Living Word campus, New Hampshire Avenue in Silver Spring. I hope that you will join us. It's going to be marvelous, and I certainly hope you enjoy this service today. Whenever God repeats himself, flashing lights should go off. Flashing lights, flashing lights. God is repeating himself. He says something in verse 24. He says something again, the same exact thing in verse 25. God never repeats himself without a very good reason. So God is saying something to us about encouraging. We should keep encouraging each other. It's important. God repeated it. We are to be people of encouragement. The family of God is here to encourage each other. I'm going to ask everyone if they will try to find a seat now. A lot of moving around, but now we're going to start the preaching and God's word. We want to respect God's word. Amen. So we'll, uh, whatever's happened up to this point, we are where we are. If you need more chairs, we'll make sure there's more chairs and Let's just hear what God's word says to us today out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning with verse 12. The body of Christ has many different parts, just as any other body does. Verse 14, our bodies don't just have one part, they have many parts. Suppose a foot says, I'm not a hand, so I'm not a part of the body. Wouldn't the foot still belong to the body? Or suppose an ear says, I'm not an eye, so I'm not a part of the body. Wouldn't the ear still belong to the body? If our bodies were only an eye, we, we couldn't hear a thing. If they were only an ear, we couldn't smell a thing. But God has put all parts of our body together in the way that he decided is best. Verse 27, together you are the body of Christ. Each one of you is a part of his body. Last week, we started the new Picture This series. The church is a family, and today the church is a, say it with me, body. The church is what kind of body? The body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. All different parts make up God's body. We are the physical representation of Jesus in the world today. Wow. What's Jesus look like? The church. The church. What a responsibility to walk in a way that honors God so that the name of Jesus has a good reputation. We're the body of Christ. We're the representation of Jesus in the world. And the picture of the body in the Bible is one that is healthy. That is functioning the way a body should function. My former assistant, Terry, her husband had a kidney that stopped functioning. So he needed a transplant. So one of his sons had a kidney taken out of his body, transplanted into his father's body, and now his body functions the way it's supposed to. The body is meant to be healthy. When you look at Terry's husband now, you'd, you'd never know. No one would ever know that he has a new kidney. All you know is the body looks right it looks healthy. He used to look very unhealthy, and now he looks very healthy. What the Bible is saying to us today is the church is the body of Christ. The church is the body. We are a living organism. But here's the thing about this body. It takes all parts of the body to function properly so that we can be healthy. 
if one part of your body doesn't function right, you're not healthy. Some of you are in that experience right now. There's something about your physical body that's not functioning correctly. And that's affecting your whole body. Our body is meant to be healthy. If we say that somehow we, we don't need each other in the body, then we're doing exactly what God's word tells us not to do. The ear says, I don't need the eye. The eye says, I don't need the ear. We need every part of the body to function. Have you ever done this where you're just, you know, racing around the house maybe without any shoes on and you smack your little toe? Doesn't that kill? And it's like the smallest little part of your body. And that, if you knock that, if you hit that little toe, it's like you're in misery. And you think this stupid little toe in all my big body. It takes the little toe and the big toe and the elbow and the eyes. We're all part of God's body. The body needs you and you need the body. That's what God is saying to us. We're interdependent. Not independent, interdependent. If in our body, our cells begin to operate and replicate independently, what happens? Cancer. Cancer. The body of Christ cannot operate and replicate itself independently. We have to work interdependently. So that we don't have cancer, we have health. God wants us to be healthy. We can't each do what we want to do independent. We have to be interdependent. We have to work together. And when we work together, the body is healthy. When we each have our contribution to the body, when we understand that if even one part of the body isn't working right, it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect the entire body. So important to understand this very significant truth. We are a body. Don't ever forget that. If, we, if you look back in what we we're just reading, listen to, listen to what it says just a few verses later in verse 26. If one part of our body hurts, we hurt all over. If one part of our body is honored, the whole body will be happy. Yes? If somebody's hurting, we're all hurting. And if somebody's honored, we're all happy. I don't know, maybe it's just my previous experience in my former church and my walk with the Lord, but this is what I've experienced. It seems like when people are hurting, it's easier for the body to gather around them and support them. But when people are honored and good things happen, it doesn't seem as many people gathered to be happy. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of weird, isn't it? Like, if somebody's gotten a raise, if somebody's been promoted, that's great news. And we should all be happy for them. It's not just when someone's going through hard times. When people are going through good times, we should celebrate. Amen? Amen? Let's be a church where people are being successful and they're being blessed and we're happy about it. We're happy about it. The success of each individual part of the body makes the whole body more successful. Let's all endeavor to do our best to reach our full potential and let's gather around each other and encourage each other and say, I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. I'm glad that you're being blessed in your profession and your professional. I'm glad for your family. I'm glad you've met someone new. I'm glad you're engaged. Let's be happy with people when they're happy and let's support them when they're hurting. Amen? That's what God wants for the church. Everybody has a role in the body. 
Each person has a role in order for the body to function in a healthy way. What's your role? What role do you have in the body? If part of our body stops functioning, if our physical body, if something's not working right, what do we do? We go to the doctor. We go to the doctor. We don't, we don't pretend we're not sick. I mean, some people do, and men sometimes do that. And then, we, and then those of us who are married have wives who say things like, you should go to the doctor. I don't want to go to the doctor. You should go. Sometimes people don't go to the doctor, and by the time they get to the doctor, what happens? It's too late. It's too late. This is a message on the body of Christ, but maybe some of you need to hear this message today. Maybe there is something wrong physically with you. And maybe God is talking to you today saying, I should go to the doctor. Let's find out what's the matter now. Let's not wait until later. But for the body of Christ, everyone has to function in the role that God has given them. And if we're not functioning in the role that God has given us, then the body isn't as healthy as it should be. We need to make sure that we're all functioning in the role. In the football world, we talk about it like this. Know your role. Know your role. Only one person can score a touchdown, and only a few people on the offensive part of the ball in football can score touchdowns, but it takes everyone in order for the touchdown to be scored. The linemen are very important. If the linemen don't block, the quarterback and the running backs don't stand a chance. So you don't say somebody's not important. Everybody's important. Everybody has a role to play. And when we all function in our role, the body's healthy. The body's healthy. We all need to function in the role that God has given us. Only you can fill that role. Only you can. And if you don't fill that role, then there's something missing in the body. Something's not the way it should be. The progress, the impact of the church is dependent upon our individual willingness to function in the role that God has given us. To do what God has called us to do. To make sure that each one of us contributes in some way. That each one of us is doing what we should be doing in the body so the body can be healthy. How does that happen? We use our gifts to serve the body. We use our gifts. Every believer is given spiritual gifts. For what reason? That they might be used in the body. That's the purpose. What's your gift? What are your gifts? Are you using your gifts? You say, I'm busy, Pastor Rick. I'm busy. You, you're new here. You don't know about my commute time and my work time. I'm busy. Busy, busy, busy. You have to find time to serve with your gifts. Otherwise, the body suffers. All oh, people don't need me. We need you. 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 We can't make it without you. We can't be as healthy as God wants us to be unless you serve with your gifts. Oh, you don't need me. We do, Pastor. Oh, what I do is important. Every role is important. Do you know, is telling some of the staff, this is what the researchers say, and I'm, I'm a research guy, I got graduate research degrees. I'm into the research. Facts are your friends. I like to know the facts. In seven seconds, someone who visits your church will determine whether they think it's a good church or not, whether they think it's friendly. In seven seconds. How important is the parking person? How important is the greeter? 
Someone comes with young children and they leave their children in the nursery, in the children's ministry. How important is that? Super important. People want to know you're going to take care of their children. They want to know the children are having a good experience. There's so many important roles in the church. So many. What's your role? When you function in your role, the church is healthy. So why don't people use their gifts? Maybe they don't know. You won't be able to have that excuse after today. When you don't use your gifts, you're robbing the body. Yes, it's a strong word, but it's true. The body is being robbed in some way from its full effectiveness because you're not serving in your role that God has uniquely gifted you to do. Please don't think it's not important. The stuff that happens on a stage is important, yes, but again, it's like the touchdowns are important, but in order for it to happen, it takes everybody doing their part. What happens up here is important, but it only is important if it's supported by what everyone else is doing. And by the way, there are things that are happening between services that are very important as well. If you don't do your part, then other people have to carry a heavier load. This is when you start stepping on toes. New pastor already stepping on toes. If you don't do your part, that means somebody else has to do more. God wants everyone to do their part, so the load is light across the board. My mother used to say, many hands make light work. If everyone is involved, then no one is too burdened. And yet, church after church, we're told, is made up of people where a small number of people do a lot of work. Is that healthy? No, it is not. It's healthy when everyone does their part. It's healthy when everyone does what they are called to do. It's not biblical to sit on the sidelines while other people are in the game. God wants all of us in the game. This, by the way, is... Again, one of many sports references you will hear in the years to come. God wants us on the field. He doesn't want us in the stands. Amen? Stay in the stands to watch games. But God's work needs everybody functioning in the role that God has given them. When people serve in their giftedness, listen, it's not stressful. It's not hard. It's not. When people serve in their giftedness, it's not burdensome. If you're burdened serving right now, my first diagnosis would be you're not serving in your giftedness. Maybe you're doing something because no one else will do it. So you've had to, that's not God's plan. The people who have the gifting need to do the role that God has gifted them to do. And when we all serve the way we're supposed to, everyone enjoys it. Let's all be happy serving Jesus because we're gifted to serve him. You know, there's some people, they shouldn't be in children's ministry. They don't even like kids. There's some people who shouldn't be up here singing. You know who you are. So we all just find the role that God has for us. And there's a role for every single one of us in his body, the church, living word. Let's find our role. We don't compare our gifts as if one is better than the other. That's pride. We all humbly offer our gifts in service to Jesus. He uses them. He uses them in marvelous, marvelous ways. People are blessed. I've already met people in the short time I've been here, and I've already met some people. And I'm telling you, I, I, just, I just, as a veteran pastor, I can say this person is in exactly the role they should be in. If somebody 
is in certain position and certain role, they need to be fit for it. And I've just seen some people, I'm like, they're exactly where they need to be. They're doing exactly what God has gifted them to do. What has God gifted you to do? You say, well, I'm too young, Pastor Rick. No, not too young to be used by God. Oh, I'm too old, Pastor Rick. No, no, not too old. We all have a role. God can use all of us in powerful ways. We need more singers. We need more musicians. Some of you used to sing in the chorus or the choir. Some of you used to play in a band. You say, oh, that was long ago, Pastor Rick. I'm not good enough to do that. Oh, oh, really? In my ministry, what I've seen is all kinds of people who said they're not good enough, who started practicing and started playing music again, and guess what? It all came back. It all, the talent was there. It all came back. The more you practice, the better you get at things. Pick up the guitar again. Start singing again. Let God use you. Those of you that do love children, you know, like you do care about children, God could use you. Imagine being used by God to shape the life of a, a child or a young person. Children's ministry, youth ministry. We need, we need people to serve, people who love kids. When I was talking with the folks about this idea of doing something for Halloween, I could see their excitement because they want to do something for children. My, I could just tell you my desire as your lead pastor is that children of this church would love coming to this church. Love it. I want this to be fun. I want them to, this is what I want them to think. Church equals fun. It's fun to come to church. I like coming to church. Fun stuff happens at church. You say, Pastor Rick, are you saying we should bribe children with candy? Yes, that is exactly what I'm saying. Exactly. Exactly. We are not above godly bribery. It's not bribery. It's generosity. It's generosity. Bring the candy, friends. Let's give it away. No, let's give it away. By the way, I was reading a little article that said like uh, 75% of parents take some of their kids' Halloween candy. Yeah. So it could work out good for you in the end. What role could you play at Living Word? What could you do that could really help our church and bless our church? We need people who will be servants. You know, it's funny in the, in the church world because the church is a part of the nonprofit world. So there's different terms. You know, some people say volunteers and some people say servants and some people say ministers. And I don't think it matters what word, really. It, it, they're all analogous. They're all synonyms of the same thing. What it means is that we, we're willing to take our talents and our time and we're willing to use them for the Lord. That's what it means to be a servant. Jesus didn't come to serve, but to. Say it with me. He didn't come to be served. He came to serve. He didn't come to be served. He came to serve. He want, Jesus is our leader. We follow Jesus. We're followers of Christ. Jesus wants us to serve because Jesus served. He's given us gifts. When I was out here yesterday, and everyone putting the stage together and doing all these things and it's, it's some of the happiest things about being a pastor is just watching people give their time. And by the way, me, quite a few of those who were here yesterday were some of our younger adults. God bless them. They could be doing a lot of stuff. They're not married. They don't have kids. They're free. They could do a lot of fun things. And they came here to serve you today. Amen? Tell them thank you for that. Thank you for serving. Thank you for using your gifts. It's a beautiful thing when the church is healthy. 
when the body is functioning the way God wants it to function. Sometimes in the church, you know, we say, we just need to pray about it. Yeah, prayer is super important. You'll hear a lot more about that in the days to come, but I'm going to tell you what. You know what the answer to the prayer is? Serve in your role, and you'll answer the prayers. What's your role? What's your gifting? What can you do? If we all do what we're supposed to do, if we all serve in the role that God has given us to serve in, if the hand and the foot and the arm are all working together and the ears and all parts of the body of Christ are working, it's going to be a healthy church. We won't have any cancer because we're working together interdependently, not independently. If you have an independent spirit, re just confess it today. Repent of it. God doesn't want an independent spirit. God wants an interdependent spirit. God wants us to think we're a body. Let's all work together as a body. Let's spend this week with the study guide and just go through it and just answer those questions and read those scriptures and talk about it together, how God wants the body to function. He wants us to function this way. This is why there's a lot of things I would love to preach and I'll get to all those things in the days to come, but I thought it was so important to just get some foundational things about what the church is supposed to be. We're supposed to be a family. Amen? By the way, let's just talk this way. The living word family. Are you a part of the living word family? Can we say that? Are you a member? Are you a congregant? Are you an attender? Let's just say, are you a part of the living word family? Okay? Let's just say that. Because some pe people self-identify. They may be a part of the family. They think they're part of the family. And you say, well, I haven't seen you here enough. Just be welcoming. Maybe they'll come more. We're part of the Living Word family. We're part of the body. What part of the body are you? What part of the body are you? How are you serving in the body? I know this, if everyone's serving in the body, and if we're all serving together, the body's going to be healthy, and if the body's healthy, what happens when something's healthy? It grows. I believe in a growing church. I've always had a growing church. I always believe in a growing church. I always want to have a growing church, but the focus isn't on growth. The focus is on health, because if the church is healthy, what will happen? It will grow. Everything that is healthy grows. Let's be healthy. Let's make sure the body's healthy. Amen? Lord Jesus, bless this church with health. Speak to each one of us about the role that you have for us in your body, in your local expression of the church right here, Living Word. Help us to serve in the role that you've called us to. Help no one to be overburdened because others aren't serving, but everyone will do their part and everyone will be at peace because they will be serving in the way that they're gifted, doing what each of us are to do, what you called us to do, and it will spread the burden around and we will be healthy and we will grow and we will make an impact for you. And we pray that in Jesus' name, amen. Living Word family, fall is in the air. And so are we. Come out and join us for another outdoor open service in just two weeks on October 25th at 10 a.m. Fall colors will be at their peak while we're worshiping together. Did you hear about the long distance runner? His name, Agos Gebriwet who stopped and celebrated his victory just one lap too soon? Head on over to Pastor Rick's weekly devotional on our website to find out what happened. Our drive through food bank drop-off is next Sunday, October 18th. Bring your non-perishable food items to the church from 3 to 4 p.m. and be sure your donations are sealed in the original packaging and that they aren't expired. Check the dates, please. When we give, 
We're not just giving to the church, but our tithe teaches us that everything comes from God. Giving is easy and secure through our website, our church app, or you can text ICGIVE and send it to 74483. Or just drop a check in the mail. We know how to take care of that too. Our missionaries are on the front line around the world, often in desperate situations. Your white basket offering today will go directly to them. Our children's fund offering will help needy children through Camp Sunshine, Portugal. Let's show these little ones God's love by providing for their basic needs. And we here at Living Word care about our family. If you'd like prayer or have a need, we want to hear from you. Email care at lwicc.org or give us a call at 301-989-HOPE and use extension 1600. Stay up to date with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and our website lwicc.org and remember, this is living. Thank you for joining us for this week's message. We hope that you've heard something that will make a difference in your life. If you're part of the Living Word family and wish to give in support of this ministry, visit us online at www.lwicc.org and click on the tab that says Give. Or you can text ICGIVE and the dollar amount to 74483. For more information about Living Word International, the teaching ministry of Pastor Rick McDaniel or service times, directions, and how to sow into our ministry, visit us online at www.lwicc.org. Again, that's www.lwicc.org. Thank you again for visiting us and may you have a blessed week.